So we're very lucky to have with us this evening Kota Takeuchi, and um, presumably he'll take his mask off eventually as well, and you'll be able to see what he looks like. Um, but uh, we heard from Lucy over there that he was going to be visiting the UK, and uh, so it seemed we should take the opportunity to grab him and put on an event to talk about his very interesting work. So um, he's an artist who uh, originally comes from Hyogo Prefecture, but is based uh, in Fukushima Prefecture, where he moved after the, um, you know, the, the tsunami and the nuclear accident uh, in 2011. Um, and uh, he, well, obviously he'll explain in detail about his work, but he looks at issues of uh, memory and um, sort of public perceptions um, and uh, he's also, so I don't know whether it's fair to say you look at disasters, but there's balloon bombs. I'm, it's a bit difficult to summarize um, what exactly he does, so I'll leave that to him. Um, but he's going to be talking this evening uh, with uh, Lena Frisch, um, and she will also presumably take her mask off eventually. Um, and some of you may have attended the event. In fact, Lena's done a couple for us this year, including one in Japanese. Um, but uh, anyway, her job is that she's curator of modern and contemporary art at the Ashmolean Museum, a part of the University of Oxford. Um, and she's a specialist in Japanese art and photography. Um, and so what we were talking about when we did her event a few months ago uh, was the book that's come out uh, together with the Ashmolean's major museum, which is on at the moment, uh, sorry, major exhibition, which is on at the moment, um, Tokyo Art and Photography. Um, so uh, we talked about that, but um, Lena has also published uh, all sorts of other things, including one of the first overviews of Japanese photography to come out in English, um, which is called Ravens and Red Lipstick, Japanese Photography Since 1945. Um, so she is an expert in contemporary Japanese art and the right person, I think, to be talking to Kota Takeuchi. And I will leave it at that. I think you're going to start with a presentation for us, Kota-san. Right. So, nice to see you. Uh, thanks for uh, give me, giving me the opportunity to uh, talk to you about my work today. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> my research-based practice uh, is informed by the environment in uh, Fukushima Prefecture where in Japan, where I live in. And the uh, historical, regional, and international entanglements uh, <coughs> that continues to press upon and uh, shape its society. So today's event, uh, title the distance and the sensation uh, while introducing my work uh, I'd like to touch on human perception and the behaviors uh, that are surrounded by medias and the technologies uh, beyond the distances <clears throat> let me begin uh, with uh, a reaction to the disaster I am the person, one of the person who have been uh, greatly influenced by the reactions to the 2012, uh, 2011 earthquake and nuclear disaster in Japan. The word disaster uh, covers a huge and diverse range of topics. However, uh, I'd like to focus on the internet and the social networking uh, at the time of a disaster. There is a lot of misinformation, political propaganda and uh, discriminatory wars uh, flying around. Uncertain information and uh, emotions uh, first it echoes each other in a small closed circle then uh, it this uh, eventually spill, spill over into society. As a reaction to 
the media structure. In August 2011, uh, it was just six months uh, after the uh, initial meltdowns. <clears throat> a man who worked at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant walked in front of the uh, public live streaming camera and held his finger at the uh, center of the camera frame for around 20 minutes. He came to be called the finger pointing worker and he launched to his website <coughs> and suggested some improvement uh, for the labor conditions on the site. And he also wrote about the narcissism of expression uh, by anonymous people. Uh, he's also anonymous. While referring the the Vita Ponchi's uh, video artwork uh, t titled the Centers uh, in 1975. And uh, I, Kota Takeuchi, uh, also worked at the nuclear power plant at the same time, so I knew him well. With him permission, I shared his performance as a video artwork. It has been shown in more than 20 uh, domestic and international uh, exhibitions. And I quote uh, Takeuchi uh, also followed his example and made some uh, artworks about the disaster and the loop of image <coughs> capture too. Uh, here is the video installation about an earthquake damaged historical theater demolition. I put a fixed camera to film the demolition, uh, demolition process, uh, then projected the footage onto the screen from the same theater. The people in this image, uh, the viewers who came to see my installation and see their own reflection and time with the demolition of their history, both witnesses and accomplices to the act. So these works of <coughs> loop image capturing are reaction to the disaster and also contemporary information environment and our society. <clears throat> Out of this project, I became interested in this relation between the physical body and its place in the separated uh, location and historical uh, time. <clears throat> Next, uh, let me say about the separated location, uh, the nuclear accident forcibly displaced uh, thousands of residents from their land. Uh, the area commonly called the exclusion zone. The separation from the residents and their land has caused uh, their mental illness and uh, suicides, sometimes suicides and uh, drastic changes in their lives. Even at some part of the zone are uh, going to be lifted the evacuation order uh, starting next year. But the majority of the area and the displacement uh, continues to exist today. In 2019 to 2020, I went to work in the exclusion zone again to support myself. The other reason was to gain access to the construction site of this uh, new interim storage facility for radioactive waste. 
within the exclusion zone, a huge facility uh, was being built uh, to store the large amounts of uh, soils from the Fukushima decontamination process. I worked as a guard security to ensure that uh, prevent the traffic accident and to ensure the soil will be soil was transported safely uh, across the road. My job entailed uh, waving the uh, red light button to guide the vehicles and to signal, visual signal uh, to the vehicles uh, by my hand. I used these two uh, of my job uh, in these photographs. These pictures are uh, trails, trails of uh, red buttons taken by controlling the shutter speed of uh, the camera. I experimented with the technique of uh, the light trail photography. So the photos were taken in the zone. I used this method to make uh, alphabet and the numbers and the symbols. These are uh, the characters uh, which are traced based on my hand movement and uh, a Bible as a uh, font. So you will also uh, be able to use on your computer. You can download uh, this font from my website. And so these photographs uh, and the fonts for me, they, are, uh, they signify separated places, uh, the inaccessible zone, as well as thinking about unseen radiation uh, and the relationship between instruments in hand, such as uh, Geiger counters or uh, red light buttons, both make visible uh, these conditions uh, through mediated communication. Stumbling over the communication, uh, we use uh, our hands to accrue the knowledge to overcome the situation. This working with hands inside and around the zone has been a small, imperfect, but essential part of the part of healing the land and the towns which are damaged by the disaster. The people on the ground are quietly taking measurements, and there is always a real problem in front of them in the communication. It's not just for the uh, construction workers at home, at the school, at various kinds of jobs. Uh, in many other situations, the people in the field uh, face the numbers and the struggle with the communications in front of them. Of course, there are some misunderstandings and uh, quarrels, but the people on the front lines have no choice but to keep working hard. Uh, I think it's like a fungi or mold, moss, uh, heating the earth after the volcanic eruption uh, burned the, the ground, they are still making steady efforts still now. I consider the radiation measurement itself to be kind of intellectual action by human beings. We started to learn about the radiation, started to use the instruments with our dumb hands and share the information to try to help the recovery and uh, use as a guide for the activities there. Although there are some problems with incorrect measurements and the process of knowledge transfer, but generally we have been sharing our new wisdom of communication uh, little by little over the past 10 years, I think. <clears throat> 
this process of knowledge transfer over time also led me to see what knowledge was already embedded in the landscape uh, from past generations. Also, the long-term effects of the disaster and the nuclear accident have made me reconsider not only the spatial separation, but also the temporal separation. It led me to explore the uh, landscapes of the local area in Fukushima where I was living in more deeply. The town I live in was historically a, a coal mining area, uh, mining the coal stones uh, for the energy that used to service the growing energy needs uh, in Tokyo area. The nuclear power plant was a contemporary continuation of the uh, energy extraction. This is a tunnel that was built by the railroads to transport coal stones. Walking into the darkness of the spaces, sometimes I would use the uh, flashlight to light my way. And sometimes I wouldn't use the light and just uh, touching the wall uh, to navigate myself to go to the uh, exit. Such kind of behaviors uh, reminded me of the Japanese yokai uh, imaginary monster, spectre, uh, which uh, called the tenome, uh, tenome, it means the eyes on hand. They take the form of a blind man with eyes in their palm. When one's own eyes are unreliable, or when one seeks information to accompany the scenery, people use their hands. Sometimes it's a smartphone to find a meeting place. And sometimes it's a guide counter to measure radiation levels. Not only researchers, but also uh, people try to see things with their hands in response to invisible situation. So such sense of fearing the history, touching the memories in landscape, of trying to understand the past with different sense, I started to look into the many stone monuments that litter in the landscape in uh, my town. Stone monuments in Japan are a common way to mark different historical moments, uh, large and small. And I became interested in this knowledge that was already embedded in the landscape, uh, which we might uh, overlook in. The library in my town has a book of a journalist whose lifelong project was to visit it and photograph the stone monuments in my town. I followed his method of transposing stone into photography, looking for the same stone monuments in his photos and reshooting them. This monument is about a US military plane that crashed into a mountain shortly after the war. This is a stone monument that remarks the reconstruction of a damaged fish market due to sea whale. This is a stone monument that remarks uh, the village reclaimed forest rights from the central government. I visited about 170 stones that recorded different events relating to industry, war, development, and accidents in the area, and uh, comparing them into an 
installation shown here, the, this installation was intended as living index of the memory to highlight the generations of the information, stone and the photo, and USB chips for computer already surrounding us in the landscape. Looking around the stone monuments, it means uh, looking around the local history. I, one day I came across the history of the strange weapon uh, used by the Japanese military during World War II. Apparently, coastal area of my town in Fukushima was the launch site for the weapon, which was called a balloon bomb. Balloon bomb is weapon developed by, ja the, by the Japanese military at the end of the World War II. The purpose of the bombs was to attack the US mainland by tying the bombs to uh, large paper balloons filled with hydrogen and allowing them to carry across the Pacific Ocean uh, on the high altitude wind current. That was the first intercontinental bombing ever used in the world. The coastal area of Fukushima Prefecture is located in the relatively eastern part of the Japan. So because of this geographic location, it was chosen as one of the launch sites for this unique weapon. This is a map that I made from <laughs> reading the official US military documents in the National Archives of the US. Of the 9,000 of the bombs were released from Japan, and hundreds landed in the US, uh, Canada, and Mexico. One of the bombs caused an electric shutdown at Hanford Nuclear Facility in Washington State that was produ producing plutonium for atomic bomb. And another bomb killed six citizens in Oregon. This is an aerial photo around there. I consulted uh, several film works and essays by filmmaker Harun Faroki about uh, remote technology and also the books such as uh, The Theory of a Drone, written by Gregoire Shamayu. Then I was determined to focus especially on blindness uh, around this Japanese balloon bomb history. My grandfather's generation used these bombs to never see the enemy when attacking them. And, uh, I can't see the past directly. The Japanese military destroyed most of the official documents and the records of, the, of this bomb uh, at the time of the defeat. I decided to travel to the site where the balloon bombs landed in the US following the coordinates I found in the archive to overcome this temporal and spatial divide. When I arrived at the approximate the location of the balloon landing, I used an unmanned air vehicle, uh, UAV, which called as a drone commonly, to replay the last movement of the balloons. This is an air <coughs> image of where a balloon bomb exploded in Damon Police Wyoming on 7th December 1944. This is an image of where a bomb exploded in Satikoi, California on 15th January 1945. This is an image of where a bomb exploded in Farmington Hills, Michigan on 25th March 1945. While researching past records, half of my mind was thinking about the contemporary issues. There is a gap 
in the image of the balloon bomb, the gap between the tender, peaceful image of the balloons floating in the sky and the photographic image of the deadly weapons and uh, the detonated victims I found in the archive. This is somewhat similar to the violent nature of the social networking communication in our time, which is then casually uncomfortable in the name of justice. Last month, I visited US again uh, despite the difficulty of the travel due to the COVID-19, uh, one of the reasons I went was to meet the witnesses and the families of the victims of the balloon bomb. I couldn't skip this process as a person who is the citizen of the perpetrating side uh, of this attack. Uh, perpetrating nation. And recently, I also researched more in depth on the episode of the balloon bombs landing around the important Hanford site, a military and scientific production center where the plutonium for the atomic bomb, which dropped on Nagasaki, was produced in 1945. Perhaps because there were guard security soldiers of important facility for the Manhattan project of the war. Detailed report documents of the multiple balloon sightings and recoveries were exist. In the center of this map, uh, the vast area, here is the uh, harmful site area. <coughs> And the balloon found site is indicated by an arrow in uh, lower left. Since aerial photos have been taken of this location, I could uh, locate there using Google Maps and uh, satellite photos. This is very rare case uh, to identify the exact landing point. And I took the photos from the ground. I'm showing you the old photos and the photo I took this time. This is uh, the same scenery. I drew a cross on the ground with my foot. Even the owner of this land didn't know that this place had such a history. So marking a place without a site marker, maybe this is one of the thing I wanted to do. Also, in another location on the west side of the Hanford site, there is a report that guard, guard soldiers chased a balloon and shot it with a revolver and stopped it on the ground. I went to the same location and shot the shooting gesture. One of the three launching sites for the balloon bombs in Japan was located near the coastal of Iwaki City, Fukushima Prefecture, where I live. So there is a possibility that this bomb was sent from Fukushima. Today, I would like to say about the technology and the blind net. I called uh, this balloon bomb as a type of blind bombing. <clears throat> it reminds me of the transmissions, anonymity, and aggression in today's information society. In the end, the major damage caused by this balloon bomb campaign was the killing of six private citizens in Oregon. They were not military personnel five children who were just enjoying a picnic, and one woman who was pregnant. Last month, a U.S. drone striking Afghanistan killed 10 people, including seven children, in the mistaken targeting. So whether it is a state-of-the-art drone or primitive balloon, 
Warming from the air is bound to cause misfires. I think the the word that allows aerial bombings continues to be the word that accepts attacking wrong, wrong targets. <coughs> uh, I am not advocating direct murder uh, over remote attack. I'm, I want to, I'm just trying to figure out where the ethics and the perceptions of uh, our age uh, comes from. The ethics of allowing mistaken bombs has a ripple effect on the remote technology that we are familiar with. I interpret it as a, the sense and the ethics that remote technology brings to us. <clears throat> so balloon bombs are not, on, not to the only blindness. The technology allows blindness to be used as an excuse. So sometimes you uh, hit the uh, damage, causing cause the damage, and oh, excuse me, uh, I couldn't see well. Uh, somebody. Uh, what I get or hit it by hit by the uh, information technology. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I saw the wrong wrong information. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> however, the technology and the media can also uh, be a way to overcome blindness, uh, especially technology on the ground. Uh, it might be like hand, hand signals in the dark, engraved stones and the written documents telling the history. I am trying to confront the spatial divide of our time with the help of this sometimes problematic technology and the media to see if we can close the temporal divide. This is my uh, recent activity. <clears throat> So I'd like to break uh, for us. So thank you so much uh, for your time. And I'm looking forward to your uh, thought and question. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Takeo Um You started your presentation today <coughs> by talking about the work that you made in 2011, mm. but you graduated from the Tokyo University of Arts in 2008. Yes. And so I thought maybe my first question would be, maybe we can go back a little bit more, mm. kind of go back to you know the starting of your art practice. Maybe you can talk a bit about the kind of you know, how, how you started making art. Uh, and maybe the, the works that you made before 2011. Uh, let me uh, say in Japanese, please. Uh,と、はい、はい。えっとですね。えっと、元々芸術のことはあまり詳しくなかったんですけど。so I'll just talk about that a little bit while we're waiting. Um, as I said originally, I wasn't very knowledgeable about art. In fact, he went to university to study biology. <coughs> で、あの、単純気まぐれで美術館に行って、え、そこで、えっと、ま、ちょっと、なんだこれはっていうあの作品を見たことはきっかけの一つですね。So, um, I was 
So one day he just randomly happened to go to an art gallery and、um, he saw some quite surprising art there. アバンギャルド芸術のと言われる絵画です、ね、あの文革文,文化大革命とかあの抑圧の,その歴史を背景にしたあの中国人アーティストたちの,あの素晴らしい絵画です。でそのうちにその僕がそのまあ科学を勉強したいんじゃなくて科学者スターのような科学者たちにこう憧れてただけかもしれないなと思って、えー、アインシュタインとかニュートンみたいなポップスターみたいな科学者たち。で自分のやりたいことはこれでもないしこれでもないなってこう消去法で消していって、えー、と芸術の勉強をだんだんするようになったというような感じですね。So he... そう。You know, your personal life or something that means something to you personally as a starting point? Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. So he doesn't have either the、um, money or the Time to go to very distant places much, so、um, he's forced to do,、um, use the things around him as a starting point for his work. So, the stage is a little bit of a stage, but the stage is a little bit of a stage. And he doesn't actually have a studio or anything like that, so he just、um, goes around the local area. なので、今、この震災前は、えっ、ー、と、にやってた僕の作品の例です。これは、えっ、ー、と、指名手配被疑者の、えー、肖像画を描く日曜画家です。So he's, uh, painting a... これは、えーとまあ、ちょっとアダルトなジョークグッズを使って作った、うんえー、彫刻を、まあ、勝手に公園に置くっていう。そうですね。なのであの、まあ、場所は近所なんですけどあの、まあ、風景街中の風景にあの埋没したあ情報ですとか、えー、私たちの感覚がどういう影響を受けているかそういうことにすごく興味があったんですね。それは多分世界中のアーティストがあの同じようにトライしてるように僕には見えて美術館に行くたびにそれがその、まあ、監視社会ですとか表現規制ですとかそういった問題に
、まあ、つながっていくというか身近なことがそういう感覚はであのこうしたトライアルをしていますそれがだから自分がそう活動している街を成立させているインフラストラクチャーの問題が、えー、地震と原発事故とですごくあの顕在化したので自然とこう少し、えー東京を離れることになります。And、um, well, it's, it's a very informative work because I didn't really know about these, these balloon bombings. But of course, it's also work that involved a lot of research on your site and a lot of going to different places and you know, traveling to all these different places.、Um, and, and actually, you can talk to some of the people who now you know, live on that ground or kind of own, own that land.、Um, and so I was wondering, you know, would you say that? Your works have a well, kind of like a political message. A political, so it was a sense on its item, hacking its item. どの,どの兵器を使うべきかとか、うんまあ、まあもちろんその避けられる戦闘は避けるべきというのは前提としつつそのどういう兵器が正しいということについて僕は意見は。So,、um, I mean, obviously, we should try and avoid wars,、mm. um, but I don't have any fixed opinions about which weapons are acceptable to use in a war. So, I'm not deliberately making these works、um, in accordance with some kind of political program. Um, but I can't see that these works obviously reflect my own perceptions and emotions, so they may have some political nature to them. So, now, I'm talking to you. 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 あの振る舞いが何によってもたらされているかそれをあの知りたいし考えたいと思っている。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。うん、でそれがインフラとかその戦争あるいはその戦争の結果の歴史そうしたものから流れられないんじゃないかなって、えー、と思ってます。Um, so I think 
those things are partly formed by the infrastructure and partly by the history that derives from the war. Mm.